Today, we're going to be talking about the Earth's energy budget and heat transfer. Heat's defined as the energy that's transferred between objects that are different temperatures. When heating something, energy always transfers from the object with the highest temperature to the object with the lowest temperature. Now, heat's transferred in three ways, radiation, conduction, and convection. Have you ever warmed yourself by a campfire or felt the heat of the sun's rays on your face as you're sitting outside in the sun? That heat that travels to you directly to the earth from the sun is radiation. We sometimes call this infrared radiation. This is the same type of heat that a reptile might feel with a heat lamp above it or chicks in an incubator. You can't see infrared radiation, but you feel it is heat. This energy travels from the sun to the earth in electromagnetic waves. On the earth, we know that this radiation happens as the sun heats the land, heats the water, grass, rocks, all these things absorb heat. And the water cycle radiation is what causes puddles to evaporate. Make sure you write some of these examples down on your paper. The sun's energy is absorbed and reflected by the earth. And we'll take a look at that in a few minutes in a graph. Conduction is the second method of heat transfer. Conduction is directly transferring heat from a substance to another substance as they're touching. Now, some solids are excellent conductors. Land is a good conductor. Metals are a good conductor. Think about kitchen cookware and what types of conductors are used. Okay. Air and water do not conduct heat very well. On Earth, conduction happens, for example, in the water cycle. The air molecules, they touch the ground, they warm up, and they rise above. In your own personal life, when you use a curling iron touching your hair, that's an example of conduction. Touching a hot stove is an example of conduction. Or bacon frying in a pan. The third form of heat transfer is convection. Convection is what moves heat through the troposphere. Convection is defined as the transfer of heat by the movement of a fluid, molecules of liquids and gases. Now, convection only happens through liquids and gases. Convection is also the upward movement of warm air and downward movement of cool air. This is what forms convection currents. This is how our wind occurs. Cool air in the atmosphere sinks, takes the place of the warm air in the atmosphere that rises. Convection currents are what moves heat through our troposphere. In the atmosphere, convection currents lead to thunderstorms and cause wind. Think of some examples in your own life where you might have conduction. Remember, conduction is when you have heat transferring through movement of liquids and gases. For example, a hot air balloon is an example of conduction as that heat is rising. A fire moving upward. Think about why the upstairs in your house is always hotter during the summer. And I'm sure your basement is much cooler because heat rises. That's from convection. Radiation and convection transfer heat energy. And this is what powers the global circulation of the atmosphere and distributes heat through the oceans. Convection is what actually distributes the heat. Now, radiation, conduction, and convection work together to heat the troposphere, where our weather occurs. If you look at this picture here, the sun heats the land surface during the day. That's heated through radiation. The land then is warmer than the air. That's conduction, because we know the air molecules are touching the land as they warm up. And air doesn't conduct heat very well, just the first few meters of the troposphere can, uh, heated by conduction. But as that ground level air warms, its molecules start to move rapidly and rise. That's convection. And then eventually that cooler air sinks, forcing the warmer air to rise, which again is our convection. Okay, now we're going to switch gears to a new note sheet called the Earth's Energy Budget. So please pull this out. Heat is a major factor of weather. 
The movement of heat causes our temperatures to change. It's responsible for our winds and rain. Nearly all of the energy in the Earth's atmosphere comes from the sun as electromagnetic waves. We classify these waves according to their wavelength. Solar energy travels to Earth three ways. The first is visible light, second is infrared radiation, and the third is ultraviolet radiation, but just a small amount. What I'd like you to do is take a second and star visible and in infrared, because most of the energy that travels to the Earth comes to these from these two sources. Now we're going to take a second and talk of each, about each of these quickly. Visible light is a mixture of all the colors that you see in the rainbow. So that's our Roy G. Biv. The light spectrum is organized from shorter to longer. Red and orange are our longest, and blue and violet are our shortest waves. Infrared radiation is our second type we're going to talk about. Take a second to circle or underline the red in the word infrared. Infrared radiation has wavelengths that are longer than red light. It's invisible, and this is what we feel is heat. Now take a minute to underline or circle the violet and ultraviolet radiation. This too is invisible, wavelengths that are shorter than violet, and this is the type of light that causes sunburns, skin cancer, and eye damage like glaucoma. At the bottom of your paper, you'll see that you have a box. Take a minute and draw this illustration in your box. What type of radiation has waves that are shorter than visible light? If you said ultraviolet, you're absolutely correct. Which color of visible light has the longest wavelength? If you said red, you're absolutely correct. If you flip to the back of your paper, you'll see a blank picture that looks exactly like the picture on the PowerPoint slide. We're going to talk about how energy in the atmosphere, uh, what, how the atmosphere uses the energy that the sun sends to it. This is called the energy budget. And just like your family has a budget where money comes in and we spend money on our daily needs, the Earth is the same way. So I'd like you to make sure by the end of this slide that your slide looks just like this. About 50% of the energy that comes from the sun is absorbed by the sun's surface. And you'll see that that's represented by the thick sun ray that comes down. Solar energy is mostly visible light and infrared radiation. It also has a small amount of ultraviolet radiation. This energy is the energy that heats the land and the water, both our infrared radiation and our visible light. Of that 100% of light that comes from the sun, after that 50% is absorbed, 25% gets reflected by the clouds and dust and gases in the air. For example, think about wearing a white t-shirt. That t-shirt reflects, reflects the light on a hot summer day, and you don't feel nearly as hot as you would wearing a black t-shirt. About 5% of that light is reflected by the surface back into the atmosphere. And the last 20% is absorbed by gases and particles in our atmosphere. This makes up about one makes up 100% of the sun that comes in. And what happens to that 100%? It needs to be even to keep our energy from the sun in balance. If you take a look at this picture, it just goes into further detail about how this, uh, our atmosphere absorbs this light. We know that the ozone layer absorbs most of the ultraviolet radiation. Some um, water vapor and carbon dioxide are absorbed by some of the infrared radiation. And then we also have the clouds and dust and other gases that absorb energy. Now remember that some sunlight is reflected back into space, just like a mirror. And it's like those clouds that would act like mirrors. 
at the Earth's surface, some of the sun's energy reaches the Earth's surface and gets reflected back into the atmosphere. About one half is absorbed by land and water and gets changed to that heat that we feel and heats up our land and air. The last thing that we're going to do is go over a short greenhouse definition. And that is the process where heat is trapped in the atmosphere by gases that form a blanket around our Earth. Remember that the greenhouse effect is a natural process. It's used to keep Earth's atmosphere at a comfortable temperature. And over time, the amount of energy that gets absorbed by our atmosphere and the Earth's surface has to stay in balance with the amount of energy that's radiated back into outer space. That keeps our temperatures consistent. The last thing I'd like you to do is to go to our science website, go to Atmosphere, and the tab that says Earth's Heat and the Energy Budget. I'd like you to take a second and to watch the radiation, conduction, and convection video. And then scroll down and do both of the interactives, the Global Energy Balance Interactive and the Global Warming Movie Activity.